So this, the time that she's talking about when she came to the house and Stephanie didn't leave because John told her not to, was this the night that the cops were called? No, this was this was before that. This was while she was still away, I believe, with the boys at the time, because I believe only all the girls were there then. Um, she had she was on the phone and talking to the older girls, and she asked them where their dad was. And apparently he wasn't there at the time. He was in New York doing an interview at that time, and Kate wasn't aware that he wasn't going to be with the children. So she was upset about that, and then they, she asked who was there with them, and they told her the name of the one sitter, which was a sitter that she had hired. And then when they told her Stephanie, and she like threw a fit because she's Stephanie who I didn't hire anybody named Stephanie, and uh, she talked to she talked to the one sitter, and then she asked her to get Stephanie on the phone, and she actually talked to Stephanie on the phone, and Steph didn't know how to react to what Kate was saying, you know, telling her to leave. So when she hung up, she called John, and she told him what what happened and what was said. And John told her, don't worry about it. I hired you. Don't leave. Make sure you stay there, and I'll take care of Kate. Hmm. So did Stephanie ever talk about the incident where the cops were called? What happened that night? She just told me that um, she was there watching the children. John was there as well, and that Kate showed up and wanted to come into the house and that John um, deactivated the the gate. I'm assuming they have a security gate or something. And she said John deactivated the gate so that Kate couldn't get in and that she was out at the gate screaming and yelling at him. And um, she said that, that the kids were, all, you know, all right there. And so was she. And that she didn't know who called the police that the police showed up and then John talked to the police and the police talked to Kate and they told her that it wasn't her time to be there it was John's time to be there and she had to leave and during that time <coughs> during that time when the night the cops came Stephanie was having a sexual relationship with him still right yes yes so this is why you're going forward because you want the story out there um, I want the I want the story out there as far as hopefully the next woman that he does the same thing with, they can see, hey, Kate Major said all of these things. Stephanie Santoro has, has these things to say. It sounds like very similar MO. Um, the things that Haley, you know, has to say, maybe we should beware of, you know, John. And my other reason is because this has ripped apart Stephanie's life, and now people are saying things, and they're not true. And it is very hard as a mother to read these things and then read the blogs that go along with them and all of these people calling her names and saying things about her. They've never met her. They don't know my daughter. And she is not a monster. She is an innocent victim. My first question was, are you sleeping with him? Did you have sex? And she said, yeah. And I said, Stephanie, you don't need to get pregnant. And she told me, Mom, you don't have to worry about that. He can't have any more kids. I asked her, I said, how do you know? And she said, he told me that um, after the sextuplets were born that he had a vasectomy. So I didn't have to worry about that. What kind of stuff did he say to Stephanie? Did he tell her he wanted to be with her forever? What kind of things did he promise her? Uh, she said that um, the more time they started to spend together, he told her that um, he really cared about her, he really cared about her daughter, and that she was the kind of girl that he could see himself spending the rest of his life with, that she wasn't someone who um, was in the public eye. She lived here close to where you know his home was and his children were and that he could tell that she loved you know being around the children and that the children really enjoyed her being around 
and um, that they just had to take it take it slow. Um, he also told her that he wanted to move her and Valerie closer to where the house was and that they were going to look at homes in this new gated community that was near the Berkshire Mall so that he knew her and Valerie would be taken care of and that they would be closer to him and that he'd also have someplace else to go when he was in Pennsylvania, but it wasn't his time to be at the house with the kids. So he really made her believe he wanted to be with her forever. Yes. And she fell for him. Yes. Stephanie had been trying to, she really enjoyed watching the children. She really, really still wanted to do this, even if things weren't um, going to go forward with her and John. So Stephanie had made some attempts to talk to Kate over the internet. Um, she sent her some messages and uh, Kate responded to her a couple of times and Steph wanted to set up a time for them to meet and talk so that Steph could really tell Kate, you know, who she was and the truth about herself and, and everything. And then she sent Kate an email um, going into, you know, to detail about how she loves spending the time with her children. She loves being around children. She was really hoping they could talk so that all, everything would come out and she could tell her everything and so that hopefully she could still watch the children and would she please call her. And Stephanie said that she got a, a thing that said, you know, Kate read the email, but then she never got any kind of response. And I, being a mother, um, felt really bad for her. And I, too, wanted Kate to know that all of these things that were being said, you know, were not true about Stephanie. So I went into Stephanie's phone. I took Kate's cell phone number out of it. And uh, one night after dinner, I went up into my bedroom and I called her. And she answered the phone and I said, is this Kate? And she said, yes, it is. And I said, hi. I said, um, this is Stephanie Santoro's mom, Marcy. And she's like, who's mom? And I said, Stephanie. And she's like, Stephanie who? As if she didn't you know, know who I was talking about initially. And I said, the Stephanie that was watching your children that John hired? And she's like, yeah, what can I do for you? And I said, I know that Stephanie's been making attempts to talk to you. She wants to meet with you. I said, I know this is really ripping her heart apart. She enjoyed spending the time with the children. She really would still like to be able to watch them. And Kate said to me that um, the day that she called the house and Stephanie was there, she said, I didn't hire her. I didn't know who she was. I asked her to leave, and she didn't leave because John asked her to stay, which was her decision, but because she did that, I don't want her back. I don't have no time for her, and I don't want to talk to her. And I said, well, Kate, I want you to know that the things that people are saying are not true. And she said, it doesn't really matter to me if it's true or not. She has to understand that my first concern is my children. They are my life. They mean the world to me. And I said to her, I understand that. My first concern is my children and my grandchildren too. I said, but she really wants just one time to be able to talk with you and let you know what really happened and what was really going on. And she just said, um, I, need to, I need to feed my children dinner. She said, I appreciate you calling, but I'm sorry. I have nothing to say to her. And she won't be coming back to watch the children. And she hung up. She didn't have a desire to talk to Stephanie and she didn't need to hear the truth or not true. And she even said to me, she said, I'm pretty sure your daughter's a nice girl. I'm sure she's not the monster she, they're making her out to be. She said, but welcome to my world. Anyone who gets involved with John Goslin, this is what happens.